Hey, thanks for joining me. In this video, we're gonna walk through how to figure out exactly how much battery capacity you need for your small solar project. And then we're gonna take a look at this 100 amp hour battery from Ampere Time. And we're gonna find out if this budget price battery is a case of you really just get what you pay for, or is it a premium battery with a budget price? Let's get into it. So Ampere Time sent me this battery for review and I used it in my build for this little DIY solar generator project. And I did a video on that recently. I'll put a link up there for you in case you haven't seen it, if you wanna check it out. Uh, but we're gonna get into a little more detail about the battery in this video. And I've run some additional tests and I'm gonna share with you and find out how well this battery actually performs. But before we do that, let's take a step back and just see what you get in the box. So right out of the gate, they actually give you a very nice, uh, documentation package. A very high quality um, manual with detailed specs. So you really like to see that on a product like this. Let's give credit where credit is due. They did an excellent job on the documentation. So it looks like a couple sets of battery studs, which is nice, and some uh, bolt protectors to keep these things from being uh, shorted accidentally. So I'm impressed with how this thing is packaged and shipped and uh, very impressed with the documentation so far. And uh, let's go make something with this and find out how it performs. All right, got some nice morning sun and I am putting power into the solar generator here. So I am charging my Ampere Time 100 amp hour battery. Really happy with this setup. As I mentioned originally, I kind of designed this so that I could expand this at some point if I wanted to. I already have 2000 watt continuous 4000 watt uh, inverter. And so it'd be very easy for me to add just a second battery. And this would take it from 100 amp hours to a second 100 amp hour battery. So if you're curious what this 100 amp hour equates to in terms of watt hours, like a lot of portable power stations are rated at, just multiply 12 times 100 amp hours and you get watt hours. So 1200 watt hours is the rated capacity for this battery. So I could add another uh, 100 amp hour battery and I would get 2400 watt hours of capacity with the second battery. The Ampere Time uh, battery manual here gives me the, all of these parameters and, and then many more actually that I might have to use at some point in a larger setup. So I can go in and I can customize all of these in the app so that the charge controller is optimized for my particular battery chemistry recommendations from the, from the manufacturer. So let's get into some details about the battery. So it's $399 and you can buy it from Ampere Time's uh, website. You can buy it direct from Amazon if you want. And I'll put links to both of those uh, URLs in the description below if you wanna go check them out. And um, delivery is free in the US. Now at that pricing, that would seem to put this battery squarely in the budget category. But the way that Ampere Time supports this battery is much more indicative of a premium type battery. So you get five year warranty and you get a 30 day money back guarantee with this thing, which is pretty impressive for a battery in this price range. And in addition to that, they're actually using grade A lithium iron phosphate cells in this battery. So that's very cool. I'm, I'm extremely impressed. And my comment about their support is actually just not an idle comment. I actually did reach out to their support and I did so as a customer, not as somebody who had gotten a review unit. So they didn't know who I was. And I asked a few questions about what are the, the appropriate settings for my charge controller um, that I had based on my, my DIY setup. And their support got back to me within 24 hours. Uh, in fact, it was probably within 12 hours. And they were very detailed in their answer. And they offered to uh, help me register my battery for the warranty if I hadn't already done so. They were just very forthcoming and very helpful and very polite and professional. I was very impressed with their support response. So a uh, big thumbs up to the Ampere Time support team. Now this battery is rated for about 4,000 cycles, which they project is about 10 years, where after that time it will have retained at least 80% of its original rated capacity. So that's very good. And that's also why you typically want something like a lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And by the way, if you're finding any of this information useful at all, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. It really does help me out. Now, as I had mentioned previously in the video, this particular battery is rated at 100 amp hours or approximately 1,280 watt hours. Now, I'm much more interested in how the battery actually performs. So I used a battery capacity tester and the ratings that they give these batteries are typically done at what they call 0.2C. So if you were to take uh, the rated watt hour capacity of, of 1280 
and multiply that by 0.2, I think you would get uh, maybe 256 watt hours or something like that. So if I were able to discharge this battery at 0.2C or about 256 watts continuous, I should get something very close to the numbers that they uh, published for this battery. Now my battery tester doesn't allow me to get quite that high on continuous watt draw, but I can get relatively close. I can get about 180 watts. And so you can see here in the results, I got 104 amp hours and approximately 1,270 watt hours out of this, which is almost dead on what the actual rated capacity is. So um, I, I actually suspect that I didn't have the battery completely topped off. So I'm fairly certain that these capacity numbers would have been actually higher uh, had I made sure the battery was 100% completely topped off before I started the test. Now, since we're talking about capacity, how do you know how much capacity that you actually need? That's kind of a common question that I get, and I thought I would take some time right now to maybe walk you through a real world scenario. So one of the first tools that you're gonna to want to have is a watt meter. And uh, I use this one right here. There's one that's probably more well-known called Kilowatt, uh, but it is a, and spelled K-I-L-L-A-Watt. Um, this is a, more of a generic version of a Kilowatt. It basically does the same kind of thing. Um, and I'll put a link to this, uh, it's, they're very inexpensive, uh, but I'll put a link to this from Amazon if you're interested in checking one of these out. So what kinds of information can I get from one of these devices? Let me throw up some screenshots here and I'll show you. So these will give you a summary of the current volt draw in real time, the current amp draw, how many watts your device is pulling at any given point in time. But more importantly, you can actually leave this plugged in for some period of time and it will tally up the total number of watts that your particular appliance has drawn over a particular time frame, And that will allow you to calculate an average number of watt hours that that appliance consumes. And that is extremely helpful when trying to size a particular solar battery system. And another stat is help, very helpful is understanding what is the peak watt draw at any given time from a particular device. And if you know that, that will tell you how much peak watt draw you need to be able to have capacity for in your AC inverter. So I thought it would be helpful to take a real world example here and talk about what would it take to run a full size refrigerator off battery slash solar pretty much indefinitely. So uh, there's some things that we have to know. So first of all, we need to know what is our average hourly watt draw or how many watt hours does our refrigerator use on average? So as you can see here, my refrigerator freezer actually used 6.201 kilowatts over the course of two days and 20 hours. So that equates to about 68 hours, if you do the math on that, 24 plus 24 plus 20, uh, and I get 68 hours. So if I take 6,201 watts divided by 68 hours, I get an average of 91.2 watts per hour. So now that we know how much power my refrigerator uses on average, we need to know how long we need to power this refrigerator without any solar assistance. So if we think about it, we might get some solar, some reasonable amount of solar uh, support for our battery for charging over an eight hour period. So that would leave 16 hours that the uh, we're not getting any solar. So our battery capacity has to support that 91.2 watts per hour for 16 hours. So what we can do is take 16 hours times 100 watts. So we're gonna round that 91 up to 100 watts and we get 1600 watt hours. That's the capacity, the gross capacity that we might want to plan on. But we're not quite done there because in any sort of AC inverter system, there is always some uh, power loss or inefficiency in that conversion process of going from DC to AC power. And so we typically wanna multiply whatever that watt hour number was by 1.2 uh, to account for about a 20% efficiency loss in the capacity. So if we take 1600 watt hours times 1.2, that gives us actually about 1920 watt hours. So this is really more along the lines of the type of capacity that we would like to account for. So if we have two 100 amp hour batteries like this, that would equate to about approximately 2400 watt hours. So two batteries of this particular capacity would give us more than enough uh, watt hour capacity to support running this refrigerator for at least 16 hours. And it would also give us a little headroom surplus over that, um, and then allow us to recharge the battery and power the refrigerator with solar. So how do we figure out how much solar we need? So to find out how much solar output we need to generate, we need to take that 100 watts, which we rounded up from the 91.2, 
And we need to multiply that by 24 hours, not 16, because we have to actually power the refrigerator during that eight hour period where we are getting solar. And we also have to power it for the 16 hours where we're not getting solar. So that gives us about 2,400 watt hours total to replace all of the energy that this refrigerator is gonna use in a 24 hour period. So now, what does that equate to in terms of actual number of solar panels? Well, that's gonna depend largely on where you live and what kind of weather you're going to encounter. So, and that's obviously going to be variable in terms of the weather. But there are tables online where you can look up the average solar irradiance that you get per square meter in your particular area or particular region. And that will tell you basically what is the typical watt hour output you can expect from a 100 watt solar panel in your particular region on average. Now I live in the Cincinnati area. And so in my particular uh, region, I get a number of 485 watt hours. So for the average 100 watt solar panel in my area, I'm gonna generate a total of about 485 watt hours per day. So if I take that 2400 watt hours that I need to generate, and I divide that by 485 watt hours for my particular region, that gives me a requirement of about uh, just under 500 watts of solar or, or five 100 watt solar panels. Now, I could maybe design a system with five uh, 100 watt solar panels. So in my case, uh, for my calculations, I'm just gonna round that up to three 200 watt solar panels to give me 600 watts total solar input. And it, it's not coincidental, by the way, that that is for that DIY system that I, I did um, recently, that is basically exactly the size that that system is designed to accommodate. By adding one more battery and two more 200 watt solar panels, I have a system that can indefinitely run a full size refrigerator. Now, of course, if I get five days of straight rain and clouds, well then all bets are off, which sometimes happens in Cincinnati. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully you're able to follow all of that. So I hope you did find some of this helpful. I really am trying to incorporate more of this kind of information to kind of help the average Joe out there who's just trying to get up to speed like I was. And uh, if you did find this helpful, please consider giving me that thumbs up. Again, I would really appreciate that. That's all I got for you. I do hope to see you in the next one. And until then, have fun out there.